Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Morning Briefing here on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV, Jeff DeForest, and Mike Luby Lubitz, a.k.a. also known as Defo and Luby. And we have a spectacular day here in South Florida. The temperature has dropped from 117. <laughs> I think we were in Phoenix, Arizona or something, and paled to attack this, Luby. The way the heat has just absolutely gone exponentially out of control uh, here in South Florida. But uh, the weather cooled down a little bit, and we're feeling pretty good today. Uh, I hope you get a chance to get out there and enjoy it a little bit, Michael, because uh, it definitely is beautiful. a slight change of pace. And it never the good thing never lasts long. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we were talking on a couple of our shows. Uh, this is interesting because uh, we're not inclined uh, to uh, be in favor uh, of confrontational journalism, Luby. Is that a fair statement for us to make? It's the truth. We don't, we're not yelling back and forth, screaming at each other or guests, especially, especially guests. Like, yes. even There's when like we get somebody... people in tough times, we, we're not, I guess, pussies. I guess I can say that here. We're not pussies. We're like, we will, if someone's in the middle of something, we'll bring it up. We're just not going to go, what about the thing they found? You know, like, it's not gotcha. Like, we're, you're our no. guest, you know? Right, well, we had Rick Pitino on. He was in the studio with us for an hour, the uh, former Louisville coach, now coaching at St. John's. Great guy. We know him through Degenerate Ties. Yes. Where I got to know where Rick Pitino a little bit, like, sort of casually, because he owned racehorses and had a big interest in uh, going to the track. He was frequently seen uh, here at Gulfstream Park in South Florida. Other racetracks around, uh, you would see Pitino. Uh, he had uh, any number of great successes, although... He even put it to us uh, kind of gently and said uh, he had more than his share of excesses in terms of losses <laughs> by owning horses. <laughs> he had one horse that made five million dollars or something as a racehorse and became a very valuable uh, breeding animal. And yet he still said uh, somehow that he was uh, swimming in a sea of red ink, the likes of which uh, the United States government wouldn't have to try to tap out of. And so uh, he, he no longer was involved in that aspect of the game. But uh, a, a very gracious guy. I mean, uh, a lot of people have their opinions of Patino and think of him. So, so what if there were a couple of sluts that happened to be in the door <laughs> when he was recruiting those <laughs> unsuspecting freshmen who had never been laid in their lifetime? <laughs> was that going to influence them in any way to think, hey, this is a good place to be? Oh, and by the way, we're uh, eating caviar and drinking champagne here. That was just catered by uh, Colonel Sanders himself. <laughs> All right. He, he might have bent a few rules there, uh, but uh, let's face it. Uh, most of the rules uh, that are governing the National uh, Collegiate Athletics uh, Association's members are uh, so obsolete that uh, nobody's paying any attention anymore, are they? Pretty much. Right. I was in the olive oil business with his father, but... That was a long time ago. It's for yeah. Angeli time. I don't know nothing about nothing. Yogi Berra. That was one yep. of his uh, great, great quotes. But wait, we have Patino in the studio. I mean, is your first question going to be, Luby? Hey, Rick, what about that babe in the Italian restaurant? <laughs> Did the owner really throw you the keys? <laughs> no, you're going to talk about how wonderful it is that, uh, you know, he's come there on his own and written a book. And it's something that may inspire young people to be driven to the point where they too can become and overcome many, many obstacle obstacles. And there's one itself <laughs> in, in becoming a, just a, a wild and uh, unbridled success. It was great, right? So, so we didn't confront the guy, uh, you know, and and that's not really our style. But we've had a couple of times where we were confronted about things that we were saying uh, and sarcasm and being facetious and exaggeration to make a point, embellishment. That that's all part of our game. That's what we do. It's what we're being asked to do by the uh, public out there. You, the people who are foolish enough to tune into this thing every day and say, well, what is that guy talking about? <laughs> talking about Joe Philbin? Which is what we were talking about. Because uh, we were, for a long time, working for the flagship radio station for the Miami Dolphins. And uh, part of the uh, deal was we would get first dibs on the first coach interview when they opened up training camp, which was celebrated in South Florida as if uh, it was like Bastille Day. And they were running around under the Eiffel Tower going, yeah, we did it. We did it. We found freedom. I mean, people are absolutely obsessed. Is this true in other cities, opening day of training camp? I mean, all NFL cities, do they experience that? I mean, I know it's hyped on NFL Network. It's kind of nice to see the cameras rolling and everybody's a little bit loose. And, you know, they're throwing the ball around and you're thinking your team is still going to be good because guess what? Carolina hasn't played a game yet. 
<laughs> I fired Frank Reich, man. He, he's the first guy. What a distinction, right? All the lousy coaches there have been in the history of the NFL. Not that I'm implying that he's one of them. He was all right. Was he? With the Colts. He was solid with the Colts. Colts. I mean, he has a sub-500 record overall because he's 1-10 this year, and that, that brought him, I think, uh, beneath 500. But he became the first coach, uh, Luby, ever to be fired in season in consecutive years. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that's a tough thing to do, isn't it? God. <laughs> you get another job, and it doesn't even last a year. Holy fucking Urban Meyer. What are we talking about here? Now, he might have been able to accomplish that also, but even Urban couldn't do it. That's <laughs> saying a lot. <laughs> Nick Saban couldn't do it. He, he had two years. They wanted him back. Uh, Nick, he's doing a fine job. Man, did they screw him when they signed Dante Culpepper instead of Drew Brees. That was it. The, the whole course of college football and the pros might have changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and revolved uh, around that, that one silly decision. But anyway, so uh, we're out at training camp uh, to uh, interview Joe Philbin, who we had referred to throughout his career because he, he was bereft of any kind of a personality. You, you're really hard-pressed to imagine Stephen Ross is sitting across a desk from this man and says, Wow, Joe, you're really going to ignite a spark in this city. <laughs> I mean, dead flat, flatter than a Parisian runway model, this man's personality. It, it was non-existent. All right, so uh, we dubbed him Smoking Joe Philbin, a play on the fact that he uh, actually was probably the most boring uh, guy that you would ever <laughs> listen to in any coaching situation. Belichick is, uh, you know, like Sam Kinison compared to uh, what this guy Remember Sam Kinison, the yes, guy that just came on the stage and started he's screaming? Fiery. He started screaming. Had the little way. hat and everything. He's great. He, he was great. <laughs> but I, so we started calling him Smoking Joe Philbin, and sure enough, uh, he, he starts the interview by, by saying to us, I hear you have a nickname for me. <laughs> oh, God, fuck, man. I mean, we're already on very, you know, very sketchy turf with, with the station to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to think that we fucked up their contract with the Miami Dolphins by insulting the coach. What, what's going to happen? Are they going to fire Philbin? No. <laughs> well, For starting uh, some, uh, you know, controversy with, with a bunch of uh, two little radio guys we were, for God's sake. And, and sure enough, um, after he says that, man, we, you took two steps back, did you not? 100%. I, was I, like, uh, oh, I don't this. know this guy. It was him. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> they hadn't even said, would you like a seat, Mr. Lubitz? And you're like, no, it was him. <laughs> <laughs> like a canary singing. Oh, my God. And uh, he, he then uh, continues, Joe Philbin, Smoking Joe, and says, yeah, Smoking Joe Philbin. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. like, what? Impossible. It happened to us again another time when uh, we were asked by the uh, Dolphins PR director uh, if, if we would, you know, like to meet. Well, it, it was put to us this way, that our, the defensive coordinator of the team, a guy named Kevin Coyle, it was like an old salty dog, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Joe Avizano without the gray hair. And, uh, you know, he, he was a hardcore guy. The defense was getting shredded. Uh, more holes than an O.J. Simpson alibi. And, uh, you know, there wasn't much he could do. So we uh, had dubbed him El Finito. As in, uh, they, they couldn't finish a game without giving up 50 points. <laughs> like the minute that defense stepped on the field, it was El Finito for the uh, Miami Dolphins' hopes and dreams, any possibilities. There were mathematical elimination permutations coming up, like in week three. <laughs> and, and you're saying to yourself, my God, I mean, uh, what would this guy want to meet us for except to tell us what assholes we are? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're in this business. You, you have to be a bit of a big boy, right? You, you can't just, uh, you know, ignore all of this. Uh, you're going to have to go out there again. You're going to have to take your beating like a man, are you not? Yes. Just put the gloves up, go peekaboo, yes. and uh, hope that uh, nothing really serious lands to the body. Honestly. So uh, what happens, Luby? I mean... Were you not as equally stunned as I was when it turned out what? They're like fans of ours. He literally <laughs> is like, we were like, Jenkins pulls you aside and is like, hey, uh, the defense coordinator wants, he doesn't even say his name. He doesn't say like no. Kevin. He's like, the defensive coordinator wants to talk to you. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what, it can't be good. That? I'm like, all we do is talk shit. I'm like, is he going to yell at us? I'm Reporters like, have been slugged. Reporters have been body slammed in that Dolphin locker room. Well, and DC, we're next. DCs are usually like the tough, like fucking, you know. So he had just been with the Bengals and he had fixed their secondary. And 
and Kevin Coyle was his name. And then he like sits down and he's like gushing. He's like fanboying. And it was like, what the fuck's going on? He's like, yeah, we listen every day. We're big fans, you know, actually. And we have a couple guys that, that do a thing. And we're like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> they ended up doing a dead on impression of our show. <laughs> and that's what they were doing at the defensive meetings. No wonder they were terrible defensive. <laughs> what do you mean? Went on air like and the they, next. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it turned out they loved us. We're like, we're, thinking we're gonna get skewered. We're like, maybe if they stop doing our show and, and doing more game planning, they'd be better. <laughs> I'm not breaking out a play chart, something. Watch some film. <laughs> We're doing a Defoe and Luby show, which I, I you know, consider to be. I mean, uh, imitation is the greatest form of. Oh, that was great. no doubt about it. So, yeah. so uh, we have that clip somewhere. I mean, maybe someday we'll be able to. I, I think the audio in the clip that we have is uh, sketchy. That as, is. as was our thought about what that meeting was uh, going to be all about. But uh, we really missed one. We were talking about this the other day. And and for years, I had been contending. And, and you were a little reluctant to agree with this because uh, I don't know that you were as big a fan of their music as I was. Uh, that was kind of what, 70s? I like their music. I just know them as one entity. I never broke it down <laughs> to the lengths that you broke it down and analyzed it. Well, I, I was looking at it from a sporting perspective. I'm talking about Daryl Hall and John Oates, Hall and Oates. She's a man eater. I mean, a zillion songs that pop in your head and you don't feel that badly that they're in there. No, no. Not like the Ozempic commercial. Oh, Ozempic, you want to blow your brains out. It's like, never mind. I'd rather be fat. I don't want to take this shit. I don't, you know, I'm not borderline diabetic or any of this stuff. I'm not going to just start popping pills and hope that they work. I think my mother was doing that when diet pills first came out. Oh, really? They wig around. It was just straight up amphetamines. Yep. Yep. It, it was like they shipped a meth lab speed. to your house <laughs> it was like speed, in the yeah. name of losing weight. <laughs> it was awful. So so anyway, uh, for years we've been disparaging Oates uh, uh, on the parallel of like guys that don't deserve to be in a Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right. I mean, we're talking uh, like you would bring up Lynn Swan at a bar uh, if you were outside of Pittsburgh. And what would be the first thing that the guy next to you would say? Eh, hey, Lynn Swan, what's he doing in the Hall of Fame? He made one good catch. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep, yep. All right. Was he a Hall of Famer? I don't know. He had uh, great athletic ability. He was a USC guy. He was very popular with everybody. He, he, for years, he was able to make a living just uh, holding up a shoe on the sidelines and going, look at that. They're going to need these cleats. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like the spikes that he had gotten from Phil Rizzuto or something. I, I don't know. I, they're going to play in those? you got to be kidding me, Lynn. And, and uh, the announcers would then, you know, go ahead and uh, just sort of acknowledge that, that he was, hey, nice report there, Lynn. Yeah, they're going to need some serious cleats. <laughs> But uh, Oates did not belong in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, it, it was right up there with the Lynn Swan thing. If you said uh, John Oates, and it was just him, uh, you know, him uh, distinguished by himself, uh, what would he be, man? He'd be lucky to be a lounge act uh, outside of Reno, some, uh, you know, a casino that, uh, that didn't even have a license. That <laughs> where, where, you know, you got like two cowboys in there, and uh, they're, they're having a contest to see who can do the longer distance uh, hitting a spittoon with a wad of tobacco. That's <laughs> it, right? I mean, no, it would be nothing. He wouldn't be playing stadiums. He wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. So it turns out, uh, we, we've been contending this for years, that, that he yes. has no business being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, then we get him on an interview, and I bring this up because now Hall is suing Oates, uh, validating and verifying all of the things that we said all along. <laughs> saying this schmuck didn't have anything to do with this. I love it. For years you were saying Oates sucks, screw Oates. And people would come on for years saying you were an idiot. They're they're great together. Yeah. And now all of a sudden Daryl Hall comes out and was like, yeah, fuck Oates. <laughs> like Lennon and McCartney or something. No. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It was Hall all along. <laughs> To get back to our Godfather theme that uh, we have running through this thread for some reason. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, the lawsuit implies that, uh, you know, and, and now uh, a couple of, I don't know if you would call them disparaging remarks, but uh, quantifying, qualifying remarks uh, made by, uh, you know, a, a uh, visibly, you know, upset Daryl Hall, thinking that he even has to acknowledge this man. And uh, he, he was saying that he, he was not his musical creative partner. He was a scrub playing the guitar, man. He probably was the only other guy that Hall knew when he was at Temple University that had a guitar. 
<laughs> Maybe he was the first guy he saw in a quad when he was walking around looking for somebody that could uh, play some rhythm for him. What is he even doing? Rhythm guitar. <laughs> Four chords. All right, so uh, we get him on an interview, of course, and uh, what do we do, Louie? I, I don't really uh, care for this term that much, uh, even though it is no filter, but, uh, you know, the whole idea of being, of pussying out. As yeah, pussying call. out, wuss out, lame. You're John Madden saying, well, you know what he did on that play? He pussied out. Yeah, we, we wussed out. Whatever you want, whatever term you want to say. Wuss is not even, uh, you know, that that's, uh, you know, cancel culture material also. We didn't even, you, we didn't attack him. <laughs> attack him? We, we just blew him a new one. It's amazing. I was ashamed of myself after that interview that I didn't bring up any of these contentions that we have been proliferating and perpetrating on the public for years. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it was like, well, I'll tell you what, John, uh, you know, this, this Daryl Hall, uh, sketchy voice. <laughs> Some of the rhythms are a little off there, sometimes off key. Uh, thank God for you and, and, and all of those great hits. <laughs> A complete blowjob we did. Yep. Does that blow us uh, out in terms of credibility as journalists, Luby? I just wanted to say. I just think it's funny. Holy Carissa Thompson. What are we talking about here? I talked to the coach. He says they're going to have to run the ball more, and if they can't run the ball, they're going to have to pass it. What difference does it make if she lied about that? <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. It's just funny that she lied. He said that somebody's going to have to step up and make a play. Ooh, ooh, I tell you what. There if she made go. that up, are you really going to think, wow? Well, no, know. the reports, whether they're true or false, they're all dumb. But I just think it's funny that she lied. Like, I wasn't yeah. angry. Why like, I know all the sideline reporters. Yeah. Oh, my God, she's ruining the – it's like, sweetheart, like, I, I, I don't mean to be mean, but, like, you've said nothing ever. I just think it's funny that she lied. It's like, just tell the truth because the truth and the lie, who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> like, don't yeah, it looks like you rolled an ankle there, Joe. Back up to you. It doesn't I, – I mean, look, there are people that are good in it. I don't know. Yeah, why. Yeah. I mean, our good friend Leslie Visser, the pioneer she was of the great. whole genre there for women, uh, got the whole door open. And, uh, you know, but she used to ask some good questions down there. In the yes. She that got them to laugh. She got the people respect her. Yes. She got them yeah. to loosen up. She got them to be fun. No, no I'm not paranoia. Yeah. I mean, if Frank Wright could get fired in back to back seasons during in the season. Yeah. A first unprecedented in the National Football League's history. Not even Rich Kotite managed to do that. Not even Tony Sperano managed to do that. All right, so may he rest in peace. Uh, we have to go. Uh, that, that's today's edition of the morning briefing. We pussied out, I guess would be the lesson there. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be a better way of putting that. From Mike Luby Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. We'll catch you next time uh, here on Caffeine TV and nofilter.net for the next edition of the morning briefing. <laughs>